Are you a self-centered seller? Here's the Christieism. It has to be all about them before it can be all about you, before it can be all about us. So if it's really all about us, why am I still getting emails, LinkedIn messages, and voicemails from sales reps all talking about them, 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 their product, their service, how they can help me, but not really talking about me at all? Well, so today I'm gonna give you five ways that you can be less self-centered and more collaborative with your prospects and customers. Here we go. Tip number one, question, question, question. You know how it is when you're at a cocktail party or you're sitting at the bar at the Marriott Hotel and someone starts to ask you about yourself? Makes you feel important, right? Of course it does, because they want to know about you, all about you. Well, that's what questions do. We talk a lot about the discovery call. I say, Discovery is not an event, it's a process. You should always be asking questions. But okay, let's go ahead and just talk about the discovery call itself for a minute. It truly does have to be all about them. Let your inner journalist come out. What do I mean by that? Come on, think back into school. Who, what, where, when, how? Any question that starts with that is first off open-ended, which is gonna get them talking a lot more than if you ask a closed-ended question or what I call the multiple choice question. Now here's one thing you should probably leave off when you're doing all those questionings. Don't ask somebody why. Why puts people on the defensive and we don't want that. I found that the two best journalism words are how and what. When you ask somebody like, what made you decide to do that? Much different than saying, why'd you do that? Can you tell the difference? So let your inner child come out. My son says I'm nosy. I prefer naturally curious. So discovery is not hard for me at all. I'm always wanting to know about other people. I think people are fascinating. But you need to understand about them and their company and their problems and even their customers and who they're selling to. There are so many questions to ask a prospect when you get them on the phone. The questions are truly endless and it really could go on for hours. But make sure you understand what the most important questions are. Why? Because at the end of the day, we need to determine fit. And so there are certain questions that will lend themselves to that information to help you determine that more so than others. Tip number two, become an industry or thought leader expert. Everybody loves good tips and tricks and your prospects and customers are no different. You know what, this is what you do every day, 40 hours a week. And maybe the same is true for other prospects and customers that you're working with. But you should be on top of industry trends, data, even like maybe negative things that are going on in the market. So you need to be in touch with information that maybe comes out of your association, maybe things that you get off the internet, maybe you've even got a network of people that you rely on. But you wanna be that person that your prospects and customers call when they say something like this, hey, I'm starting to see this trend happening in the industry. What do you think about that? Do you have other customers reacting to this? And you should have an opinion about that. Remember, you're an SME, you're a subject matter expert. And that's a very selfless thing when you gather information that maybe your prospects and customers don't have and put it all into one place. Maybe you wanna put a webinar together. Maybe you wanna put out a monthly newsletter. That's what I've chosen to do to keep my customers and prospects in tune with things that are going on in the industry. Maybe you wanna build an infographic and send that out. But you should always be at the top of your game and sharing that information. That's the selfless thing to do. Here's my third tip for you. Be a connector. You touch all kinds of people, prospects, customers, coworkers, industry experts. You should be a connector. You should be putting people together. This became very clear to me a few years ago when I met a local guy named Matt Camp. I met Matt after he had been a subject matter expert speaking at a breakout session at a conference that I was at. And I was a little surprised at the topic, but it was all about being a connector. And what he shared was that for 365 days, he had committed to meeting new people, three a week actually, and then putting those three people with three other people Every single week, every single week, he had three meet and greets with three people he didn't know. 
and then committed to introducing those three people to three other people in his network that he thought that they could benefit from. Wow, talk about selfless? Well, I thought Matt was great and thank God Matt and I are still friends to this day and guess what? On Tuesday nights at the bar up the street from him, he holds a connector meeting. And I try to go as often as I can when I'm in town because you never know who I'm gonna meet and what I'm gonna learn. So here's the best thing that you could actually do as a connector. You could actually introduce your prospects and customers to people that could become their prospects and customers. Talk about feeling indebted to you if you called up customer A and said, hey, I just met with a prospect and I think they'd actually be a good prospect for you as well. I'd be happy to make that introduction if you'd like. Talk about selfless, selfless, selfless. So try doing this the next time you meet somebody new. Before you part ways, think about who in your network maybe they should meet and know that they don't today. Be a connector. Here's tip number four. Understand their problems. I mean, really understand their problems. And here's what I mean by that. I think when we do discovery and we ask a bunch of questions, problems do naturally come out. But are we really peeling back the onion and digging deep on those? So here's a technique that I use to do that. I call it question on a question. So let's say you ask a really benign question like, how are you currently doing that? I call it the current situation question. And they say, oh, well, we're using spreadsheets and maybe some BI tools to do that. So then I ask a follow-up question based on the answer they just gave. Oh, so how long have you had your BI tool? They're, they tell me, mm, a couple of years. And then I say, well, what made you decide to purchase a BI tool two years ago? And they say to me, well, we thought we were maybe lacking some analytical information that we needed. Then I ask another question. So what analytical information did you think you were missing? And then they tell me the answer. You get the game. But over time, what's gonna happen is, pain is gonna naturally come to the surface. And this is truly important. Sales reps have done a great job, I would say over the last 10 or 15 years, of really talking about pain and understanding it. But here's the one thing that sales reps still aren't mastering, the financial impact of that problem or pain. Hmm, sounds a little trickier, doesn't it? Well, I'm old school. I go all the way back to a book called Spin Selling. Spin was an acronym. The S stood for situation questions, the P for problem questions, the I for implication questions, and the N for needs payoff questions. So that really wasn't a terribly hard concept, but over the years I changed implication into impact. I think it sounds a little punchier and is easier to remember. So when I go through someone's discovery call notes and I say, wow, it looks like you got a two or three pain points here. And they're like, yes, I did. And I was like, cool. So what's the financial impact those problems are having on their business? And they're like, huh? And I said, well, every problem has a dollar associated with it. Either cost or revenue. Either that problem is keeping them from getting additional revenue or it's costing them money. So which is it for their problem? Well, sales reps are like, oh, well, that's easy. Like, yeah, it's keeping them from getting more revenue. And I said, perfect. Now I'm about to use my question on a question technique on the sales rep. Huh, so how much revenue is that costing them? Well, this is where I normally get the blank stares. So like, well, I don't even know how to figure that out. And I said, well, sure you do. Let's talk through it. So how many customers a year are they not selling as a result of that problem? Sales rep's like, I don't know. I'm like, guess, I'm like five. And I go, great. So do you know what the average sale of each customer is? They're like, yeah, about $50,000. And I said, okay, so how big's the problem? The light bulb goes off. Oh, they say, they've got a $250,000 problem. I'm like, right. And do you have a $250,000 solution? They're like, no, my solution's $30,000. I'm like, oh, well, we call that ROI. That's a return on investment. By spending $30,000, they can gain $250,000. That's your business case. How could they say no to that? But you really have to understand the financial impact. And it's really not that hard. But not only do you need to understand the financial impact, 
you need to do the math with the prospect or customer. I'm always shocked at how many times I ask these questions and I say to them, wow, so you've got a $250,000 problem. And they go, oh, I, I guess so. They didn't even know how big their problem was. You were the one that told them. Do you know how many sales reps they talk to every single week? But you're the one that actually put a dollar figure on their problem. Here's the fifth tip about being a selfless seller. Personalize and customize. Well, this is the Christieism. Everyone wants to be a special snowflake. So treat them like a special snowflake. When you email them, when you talk to them, when you leave voicemails for them, and when you message them on LinkedIn. Over time, as automation has come into play for outbound prospecting, the topic of customization and personalization, well, this has been a definitely a hot button item. And so let me tell you what personalization and customization is not. It's not just using my first name in the email. It's not just using my title in the body of the email. It's not just saying I've helped other sales consultants like you, Christy. It's definitely more personal than that. It's when you've gone into my LinkedIn page and I do a lot of talking about things on my LinkedIn, on my LinkedIn profile. So maybe you read an article that I posted. Maybe you read a comment that I made. Maybe you've got an opinion about one of those two things and you say so. Maybe you've been to my YouTube channel and you've seen some videos and you've got some feedback on those as well. Maybe you've been to my Twitter page and you know that during the winter season, well, NCAA basketball, go Jayhawks. I'm all about that. There's a lot of talk about basketball on my Twitter page. And if you started out a message with Rock Chalk Jayhawk, I can guarantee you, you're gonna get a reply from me on that. So dig a little deeper. You want people to feel like they're a special snowflake. The other way you can do this is not just from personalization and customization, but also from active listening. You'll be a lot better at customization and personalization if you're truly tuned in and engaged when they're talking. Same thing if you're doing some research on them, going to their LinkedIn profile page, going to their company website. How about going to their careers page and taking a look to see what jobs they may have open? And again, remember, going back to being a connector, what if you actually emailed them and said, hey, I saw you've got a job opening for a solution consultant. I actually know somebody who's actively looking for a position in the SaaS industry. Would you mind if I made an introduction? Talk about intertwining being a connector with personalization. Well, that's gonna be a big 100%. In today's current economic climate, making sure that your prospects and customers really think that you understand them is super important. Like I said earlier, I think you'd be shocked at the amount of sales calls, emails, and LinkedIn messages that a buyer gets every week. You need to make sure that you can stand out above the crowd. And how do you do that? Being a selfless seller. If you liked these tips and tricks on selling, I've got a lot more where that came from. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you're the first to know every time I drop new content. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time.